So more often than not, people focus on what people with disabilities can't do and not on what they can do. And I'm here with Ian Malisowski. Um, very happy to have him here because he is the perfect personification of somebody thriving amongst challenges. Um, happy to be here with him and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Ian. Um, I'm currently a sophomore at the University of Miami. I'm uh, studying neuroscience. Um, I am originally from Erie, Pennsylvania and I was injured about uh, four years ago. So um, I've had a, a long journey and I'm just thankful to you know, continue to thrive and um, I'm just really blessed and happy to be here. Thank you, thank yeah. you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about what your life was like before the injury? Yeah, so prior to my injury, I was a big time wrestler and football player. I was a division one recruit for both. Um, and you know, I just kind of lived the normal life. I loved going outside. I you know, loved playing sports, obviously. Um, I was a dedicated student. And um, about three and a half years ago, um, I was wrestling at the Cadet World Team Trials. And um, in my first match, I uh, unfortunately uh, broke my neck, broke the C4 vertebrae in my neck, and I was uh, paralyzed from the neck down. Can you tell us a little bit about that, about what your journey was like? Yeah, so uh, originally, uh, the the doctors weren't sure if I was going to even make it through the original surgery and you know it was a long journey. I was in the intensive care for a month, um, you know, I was intubated, I was in a medically induced coma for two weeks and then um, I went to a rehab hospital in Pittsburgh and I was there for about six months. And then I became the transition to you know going back home and trying to resume my normal life and trying to get acclimated and start classes back in high school again. It's remarkable what you've gone through. Yeah. So what was some, who, who was there to support you through this? How did you get through that? Well, I have a great you know, family, great, a lot of friends. And actually, you know, throughout my injury, there was a lot of friends that were there before that weren't there after. Um, but you know, my mom is obviously my rock, and she's my caretaker, and she's helped me through the most. Um, I, my older brother's been there. My best friends, Nick and Joe and Chucky, they've all been there. So. Like I said, I have a great support staff and they've been there from the beginning. I've learned from experience that doing this alone is close to impossible and yeah. so I'm happy that you have a great support system. So can you tell us a little bit about what your family is like, what your siblings and your, or your brother and your mom? And... Yeah, so my brother and I were 10 months apart. So yeah, we're, Super yeah. So we're best friends and we're in the same grade. So, you know, we played football together and we just grew up arm in arm and we love each other and you know the injury was hard on him originally because my mom was with me in the hospital for nearly a year of his life so my brother was kind of living on his own and it was really tough on him just because you know you see me as his little brother as a great athlete and you come to the hospital and I'm connected to all these tubes and you know, it was just a really emotional time for us but it you know made us stronger, made us all stronger. We, you know, we've banded together and it's just, he's, he's in school right now, still up north, um, but he's down here all the time visiting and we just, you know, we're still as close as we are and even closer. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm glad to hear that you have a wonderful support system. Yeah. Did I ask you um, how old you were when you got injured? Yeah, so I got injured my sophomore year of high school, so I was 16, I got injured right the last day of my sophomore year. So I was in the hospital all summer and then I returned to school midway through my junior year. And I had some health issues, so um, I was you know, in and out of school and um, I was still able to graduate high school on time. So um, yeah, I got injured when I was 16, so. How are you able, with taking a year off, how are you able to still graduate on time? Like I was. Like I said, having a lot of medical issues, so I had to do most of my school work from bed. And obviously, I don't have the ability to write because I don't have hand functions. So it was a lot of trial and error in the beginning, trying to figure everything out. But like I said, I was able to graduate top 10 in my class, and I was able to graduate on time. So it was just a lot of hard work. but. Um, I figured it out. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So we were talking about this actually right before and 
One of the things that you mentioned that you think that has given you that discipline was actually your sports background. Yeah. Can you open up about that to us? Yeah, so I started wrestling at the age of five and a lot of my prior coaches, um, you know, they thought I'd be angry at the sport because, you know, it's what ultimately, you know, got me injured. And I look at it a completely different way. Without wrestling, you know, I wouldn't be here today because it has given me my work ethic, my drive, my determination. And, you know, without that, I wouldn't be able to maintain the grades I have. And I just, you know, wouldn't be able to work as hard in physical therapy. So even though the sports have, you know, taken a lot away from me, they've given me even more. And can you share with us what your aspirations are for the future? Yeah, so um, when I was, prior to my injury, I wanted to wrestle in college and play football in college, but obviously now that's a, my path got derailed a little bit, but um, I'm currently studying neuroscience at the University of Miami, and I have the hopes of going to medical school um, and, you know, I really love advocating for the disability community and I want to continue to do that and um, I've actually done a little bit of motivational with speaking. So there's a lot of things that I want to stay involved with and just taking it day by day. Is this where you saw yourself going before or did this injury change the trajectory of your career, let's say, or what um, do you think? I was always, in, always interested in uh, medicine. Uh, I probably would have gone to medical school if I didn't get hurt, um, but more so now I'm really focused on you know, helping people like me. And prior to my injury, um, that definitely wasn't the case because you know, I didn't know much about spinal cord injuries and I didn't know much about people living life in a wheelchair, but um, now I feel like I can really use my platform to just you know, help make a change and you know, help people just like me. Right. And you were part of the Reeves CS campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you hope people get from that campaign? Yeah, so um, the Reeves Foundation, obviously, is an awesome resource for the paralysis community. Um, and I was involved as one of their uh, primary advocates for um, trying to erase stereotypes about people living life in a wheelchair. Um, and my main role was to show that it's possible to live a successful life after an injury. And um, the primary goal of the campaign was just to show that, like I said before, um, you can be successful, you can have relationships, you can go to school, you can work. It's possible you know, to keep on keeping on. So um, they really used my platform as a student right now to show that even though I can't write and even though I can't do certain things, it's possible to succeed. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. You've grown up so quickly from 16 to now. Can you, how old are you now? I'm only 19. You're 19? Yeah. Wow. So in three so, years you've grown up quite a bit. Yeah. So I'm still very young and um, still learning, you know. I'm still a college student and I've met a lot of great friends at the university and they've helped me out so much. And like I said, I just have a great support system and without that I wouldn't be here. And. There's been so many resources, like I've said, the Reeve Foundation, that are trying to help the spinal cord injury community and the disability community in general. So if you were to share something with people that are going through these same struggles, what's some inspirational words that you can share with them? Just that it's possible, you know. Um, I've had so many older mentors that have gone through the same injury as me and that are just living a great life, it's a successful life, for example. Um, I know people in wheelchairs that are in medical school. I know uh, guys like me that have won the Rhodes Scholarship. So just keep chugging because, you know, the first year of the injury, you might think that your life's over and that you can't finish school, you can't live a normal life, and that's just all false, you know. I've proved that you can defy your disability and you can just go to school, you can do whatever you want. And, you know, the world's yours and you just can't sit around and feel sorry for yourself because, you know, you'll never have any progress that way. So just to, you know, every single day is a new day and just, like I said, keep on chugging. Right. And every, every person's journey is different and it takes people a longer time in some cases to get to that point where you are. How long did it take you to get from 
where the accident happened to where you thought, okay, you know what, I can do this. I can, I can move forward. I can deal with this. So, I mean, like I said, I was in the hospital for a full half of a year. So, you know, it wasn't even coming across my mind that, you know, I could live a normal life in the beginning. And even a full year after my injury, you know, I still had a lot of doubts and um, just day by day. So I think, you know, a full year had gone by that before I was like, you know, I can do this. I can graduate on time. I can have normal relationships. I can, you know, be me. And I tell all my friends and all my coaches, all my mentors that I'm the same person I was before, but just a little less movement. So, you know, it took me a full year to really gain my confidence back and just, you know, continue to keep striving. I'm gonna go off of that because you say that you're the same person you were before, but in all honesty, I feel like you've gotta be so much stronger than you were and people don't see that. Yeah. Because there takes a lot of inner strength to continue forward and you didn't have that before. So you are stronger. Yeah. Even though people don't see it, you're stronger yeah. than you are. I agree, I agree. That just goes to prove that even at such a young age, you can be such a huge inspiration to so many and I'm grateful for you coming out here and sharing your story. Thank you.